Rosanna, thank you for coming and welcome to Personal and Business Growth episode. Um, would you like to start by introducing yourself? Tell us who you are and what you offer. So I am, uh, my professional name is Rosanna Price, it's complicated, um, and I am an acupuncturist and a practitioner of zero balancing. Great. And how long have you been doing this? I've just reached my 30th anniversary. Wow, congratulations. So LinkedIn told me. Yes, the other so day. celebration, 30th. cakes. Uh, yeah, just it feels I, I I have felt that it's been thirty years for a couple of years, so I was quite surprised it was only thirty. But yeah, a long time. Sounds like a long time. Mm. Okay, would you like to give us an idea how you got into uh, acupuncture and then zero balance? Uh, so it was very unlikely because I had a terror of needles, and I used to have fillings at the dentist without injections. So okay. I really didn't like needles. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was um, suffering very badly from migraines. I was in my mid-20s, mid mm -hmm. and three people in the same week suggested I try acupuncture. Okay. At which point I thought, there is a message there, mm -hmm. and I did, and it was amazing, made a huge difference, not just to my migraines, but also my lots of other things, lots of stress-related things, and other issues I had in my life and I wasn't happy in my job at the time and I thought maybe I could do this. So it was my own experience mm. um, and really not enjoying being an employee, right. combination of the two. Okay, can I ask what you were doing before? I was working, I, after I um, finished university, I was working in the charity sector and then arts admin in publicity and as a press officer um, and doing fine mm. um, in London, yeah. working in London. Um, but I didn't really enjoy being in PR. Right. It didn't really fit me as a personality because okay. sometimes I was encouraged to lie for my organization. That kind of thing didn't sit well with me. Yes, I understand. Okay. So as it happens, I mean, this story is quite recurrent for me. So people receive a treatment. They like it so much. It changes their life. You decide to become one. Correct. Okay. So... Can you, is there any way how your past experience, like working in PR and so on, led into this new profession? Um, only as a reaction against it, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I was, I've always been motivated, without sounding like a saint, I've always mm. been motivated by trying to make the world a better place. Great. Which is why when I finished my geography degree yeah. I was never going to go into a geography um, um, sort of orientated um, field I was mm. interested in working in a in a situation that was about in some way making the world a better place yes which is why I looked for a job in the charity sector mm -hmm. however five years on yeah. I was feeling so overwhelmed by the woes of the world which mm are always overwhelming, as we know now, um, and feeling helpless that I couldn't make a real difference. It was too big. And so the chance to change the scale and go, actually, if I can do something that maybe makes a difference to one person at a time, one at a and time. that their feeling better can then spread as a ripple, as we know it does, out into their world and beyond, that is something I can manage and do. And that's, so there was a connection, but it was to do with changing the, um, the, the scale of the, of the world so that I could do something I could do. Great. And so was it a, a, a gradual kind of change for you or kind of a sharp pivot, like quick decision? Uh, the dissatisfaction and the feeling of overwhelm Mm. was gradual, yeah. uh, but it was in fact the acupuncturist that I was seeing yeah. saying to me, have you ever thought of doing something like this, Right. was a sudden, it felt like 
that moment in a film where the sunbeams come out from behind the clouds and the choir starts singing and it's like, it felt like a, for me, I could do this. Wow. Amazing. So that was a, a sudden, sudden thing. Yeah. This is what we in coaching, we call the Eureka moment. It was a Eureka. You had the illumination. It was a Eureka moment that it, it could be for me. Yeah. That I could, I could do that. And then it was very quick applying right. to the college, etc. Yeah. And so do you remember at that time, if there was anything holding you back in this? I had a mortgage. Um, and so you have those sort of commitments. Yes. And I, the way I, what I actually did is I resigned from my job. You did. I made a decision to resign from my job. And I then worked for um, 18 months or so doing temp work. Mm -hmm. So I had enough money to survive. Yeah. Um, and I started the training and I was working like that for a while. And then I got a part-time job, which was mornings, when I was in the position to start building up my practice. Wow. Um, and so I did a half-time job and then was building up in the afternoons. And then it got to a point where uh, I was not able to book people in because I didn't have enough time, yeah. at which point I took the plunge and gave up that job. Right. But that was over a period of, you know, a few years of mm. adjusting from one kind of life yeah. to another. It's a lot of mindset changing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But people used to say, oh, you're so brave. Mm. And I said to them, I would have to, it would take more courage to stay in the job that I hate. Sounds a very wise answer. Yes, absolutely. And do you remember what was the biggest challenge in this process? I suppose um, trying to find a way to trust that things would work out when mm. I'm not, I'm naturally an anxious controller. Right. So that was a big, on a personal level, to kind of go, I like to know exactly what I'm doing and map yeah. it out. And then to go, I have to trust that it will it will work out. And obviously in this world that I've inhabited for 30 years, there's lots of new age thinking about, you know, attracting things to one. The universe things will, will The universe will provide it. And you have to get a sort of balance between there being probably some truth in that, in that yeah. if you if you open yourself to new possibilities, you're probably more likely that those possibilities will come. Sure. But you also need to be practical and sensible and not, not... I'm not naturally an entrepreneur who will want to take risks. Yeah. Great. Very, very interesting. Uh, do you remember one person had the most influence in your professional life? Um, he, well, apart from that acupuncturist who put, yes. sowed the seeds originally, um, it would definitely be um, Dr. Fritz Smith, who was the creator of Zero Balancing, which is the thing that I do other than acupuncture. Of course. Who is an inspirational figure. He's still in his 90s going strong. But I, I'm not somebody who goes around in my life looking for guru, gurus and mentors and mm. people that I can follow. And he's not like that, but he is a very inspirational person and, and his way of thinking and what he has, what he teaches in terms of a set of principles to live by and work by have yeah. been profoundly influential for me. Is he the inventor or the, the, he, yeah, the he, person who defined He, he the created it created. from his lots of different things yes. that he was doing. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember in this process of yours of becoming a practitioner for acupuncture and zero balance, one mistake that was more painful than another? In the process of becoming an acupuncturist? Or even or in the, once you uh, have been. Well, I suppose... Uh, I, don't really, I don't really think in terms of mistakes. Yeah. Um, because a mistake is really only a mistake if you don't learn from it and you just go downhill from it. Right. And it, it's not that I'm sort of super positive as a kind of principle, but no. I tend to think, oh, looking back, it's a good thing that happened because I learned from it. Right. And so I wouldn't, I don't think, oh, I made loads of mistakes. I do think that I, I did stay, um, 
I was based in Northamptonshire for 30, for 30 years until the beginning of this year, as well as moving to Cambridge more mm. recently. Yeah. And I did stay working at a clinic for 19 years, giving the um, manager of the clinic 25% of my income for all of that time. Wow. Uh, and I was not valued and appreciated. Mm. It was only when I left it that I thought, why did I stay that long? Yeah. I think that when we do the kind of work that we do, yeah. and integrity is important, mm. you, how can you work with people um, if you're not in a, in a, a situation where you feel comfortable, yeah. where you feel that it's a good fit for you? Mm. And so I would say that that's, that's something I learned and I have now I've had to change various times where I work and I, I I really take my time to think is this does the ethos of this place fit do I feel comfortable in it mm. is does it feel good to me right because I can't really do my work well if I'm not feeling absolutely happy in myself within that context right so would you change anything in what you've done in the past to do, with, to do with this work, to do yes. with this, uh, no, I think it's been fantastic. I'm I'm so lucky to do a job and to, to have been doing work for thirty years that I have simply loved. I go home at the end of the day and I am, um, I think, well, I to some degree I've made a difference and I've enjoyed it and I, yeah. I, I'm good at it. And yes, sometimes I might, you know, be have not such a good experience or not work so yeah. brilliantly with somebody, you know, but, but on the whole, uh, no, I wouldn't change anything really. Great. So what has been your proudest moment as a practitioner to date? Do you remember one particular, maybe client that was particularly challenging and you came out with something extraordinary? Oh, um, I, think, I think as a practitioner, you have to be careful about your ego. And I think if you start going through your day going, well, I was really amazing today, mm -hmm. I think that's the day you need somebody to tell you to take a good hard look at yourself. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I would say much more genuinely, um, lots and lots and lots and lots of proud moments or, or satisfying moments. Yeah. Because if somebody comes to you and says, I haven't felt this well for 40 years. Wow. After one treatment or so, I usually kind of go, okay, it may not last, but let's, that's a good, mo good, good beginning. But if, if, if somebody manages to um, maintain a pregnancy to full term after many miscarriages, uh, if, if, if somebody says, I've never felt able to talk to somebody, like mm. I've talked to you, and it, it means so much to be able to unburden myself. Each one of those is a is a is a a, a, a blessing and a gift. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, hopefully for them, but for me. Yeah. And one of the things that I've learned in all the years that I've been doing this, and I've had plenty of therapy myself because I think that's important too yeah. to be open to learning and growing yourself, is that it is a mutual relationship. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I don't tell my life problems to my patients and clients but I do get fed by them yes because and 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 having had to give up or chosen at the beginning of this year to give up working in Northamptonshire mm -hmm. and fully arrive here in Cambridge after three and a half years um I I know that um it that actually over time the relationship <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just let you cough. Sure. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I know that over time, with people that you work with over a long term, mm -hmm. it is uh, a relationship of love and trust. Yeah. And so that is a mutual thing. And it's, uh, you know, yeah. So it sounds to me like you're getting from your clients as much as they get from you. It's, it's <clears throat> different, and it would be of really course. inappropriate if it wasn't different. Of course. But... Uh, Absolutely. Um, uh, because the whole of my work, the way that I work, which is not how everybody works, is I, I want to be real yeah. and present 
yeah, as a sure. human being. Absolutely. Not with my baggage in front of me, not with my, oh, my, you know, the kitchen fitting's not going well, I, <laughs> yes. whatever, and I didn't sleep well last night. Not all of that. No, of course. But to be real and genuine, because mm. then they can meet me real and genuine. Yes. And, and then something potentially uh, wonderful can happen. Um, so, uh, yes, it is a, it is a very much a, a shared thing. I am not interested in being enigmatically remote. No. Behind a clipboard or uh, a computer screen, I want to be in relationship with my people who are with me, and then we can do we can roll our sleeves up and work together. Great. Okay, so in the next section uh, of this interview, we're going to speak about therapy, as mm-hmm. because you offer two therapies which are somewhat interlinked, interconnected, but obviously they are fairly distinct. Yes, I will ask you the same questions separately for okay. the two so it's easier to for you to explain first how acupuncture works and then how zero balance work okay, okay? Yeah. so can you give us a first first um, outline of how acupuncture works most people will know acupuncture okay. is based on yeah. needles yeah, 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 yeah. but uh, you need kind of thousand years to explain yes. that really uh, so yes everybody knows it's the insertion of needles into special points yes um, I would rather Mm. say how might a person engage with it because to you, anyone can go on to Wikipedia and read the theory and the doctor will say something different. Yeah. Um, essentially, acupuncture um, as a modality is interested in um, helping get balance mm. and it's working with energy and I, I'm not a sort of space cadet energy worker. I, I think energy is the stuff that makes us alive, yes. not dead. Um, and, you know, the difference between a, a, a giant fir tree and a telegraph pole, you know, we, there's life and there's the sort of stuff. Um, and that just as in nature, um, energy is moving around yeah. and it can be raging or it can be, or a stream can be a dry trickle or a, a, a flood. Look at what you know, happens in, you know, typhoons and yes. hurricanes and things. So too can our energy be either stuck or too exhausted or too full. So a lot of what acupuncture does, and honestly, it is a mystery. Yeah. It is weird. You know, people, how, how it happens, yeah. but the insertion of these needles into points when you have an understanding and an overview, which is what comes first before you have a yeah, needle, um, how that you can do it is, is extraordinary. But yes, you can calm, clear, move, but it's always, I see it as very much a, you're offering, I am offering through mm. the needles yes. an opportunity to grab hold of that and go, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. You can't make it happen. Yeah. Um, so, so acupuncture is one of the ways that you can try to get a person's internal functioning physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if you're, that's your, your thing. Yeah. Um, to be in better harmony mm-hmm. so that things work well together, yeah. like bringing an orchestra into tune. Yes. Um, uh, you spent time sorting out the balance of our sounds with the microphones. You know, if things are out and one's going to drown out another, then that's not going to bring out good health in a person. And it is, it does link physical, mental, and emotional because they all reside in the one package that is the person yeah. um, so that's I think as much as I can say about acupuncture yeah. without becoming too technical no 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 it's fine uh, as I said it's one of those therapies which are fairly well known yeah. for the last I don't know 40 50 years people have been speaking exactly. about it obviously in China has been around for I don't know thousands but um, can you give me an idea so somebody comes to you so the, the question is how a typical session how is a typical session developed so I come to you, I say I have an issue with, I don't know, I have a back pain or something. Mm-hmm. How would you go about? So for me, the first uh, session is an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And we spend about an hour sitting down and really talking through not just the, the main complaint, yeah. 
um, but a whole lot of other yes. things to do with other health issues, to do with lifestyle, sleep, mm. appetite, etc. Family history. Uh, family history, stress, yeah. um, a, a huge amount of things. And yes. I always say to people, um, one of the real gifts of Chinese medicine yes. is that um, a whole set of symptoms yes. that from a Western medical approach may seem to be completely disconnected mm. may form an absolutely coherent pattern for me. Right. And that can be incredibly reassuring to somebody. So that instead of, well, I've also got this, I've got that, and that, as just being too much, yeah. it, I might go, well, that's all coming from the same thing. Therefore, mm. a little bit of treatment elegantly may address all of those things. So that that kind of quite detailed diagnosis is mm. really valuable in helping that happen. Um, and so that will be an hour. Then I do some treatment that yeah. first time. Uh, more testing the water. Yeah. How's this? And then I, what I always say to people when they come is, um, I would like to see you for four sessions, mm. once a week in the ideal world. And then at the fifth one, we'll have a review. Right. At that point, most people, 90% or so, will choose to continue because okay. they're beginning to feel benefits. Yes. Um, but I make it really easy for people to stop. I don't want them staying because yeah. they like me. Right. You know, I want them to know that I want them to be yeah. feeling something. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, the frequency of treatment, which is very individual, um, I will... The gap will get longer, mm -hmm. two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. But only, I want to treat people at just the right time when the benefit of the last treatment is just beginning to drop. Okay. Not gone right no. down, not still well. Yes. I don't want to interfere with that. I want to find a, a just a little nudge for the next one. And so that, that just gets longer and longer. Okay. So when we talk about acupuncture clients, mm. is that a typical client? you have affected uh, age demographic or also um, affected by a particular issue um, certainly more women than men okay it's not that I won't treat men but mm. on the whole because the kind of acupuncture patient or client people I want to work with um, that I tend to attract are people who are interested in um, the, seeing themselves as a whole Mm -hmm. yes I might do oh somebody comes with a tennis elbow that's just or they've just hurt their back yes of course I'm not going to turn people away with that mm. but what I'm really interested in yeah. working in and what my website tends to attract sure. to me is people who understand that they have a mixture of things going on and are up for looking at that right as we, a whole women do that more than men Okay, yes, Therefore, men are more pragmatic. Yes, I just want this. I, the I, arm hurts, it's her Yes, arm. I want to get back to playing football. Um, can you, can you, not obviously all men at all times, and I have plenty of wonderful male patients who are, you know, understand there's stress-related stuff or whatever, but I, I, my demographic is much more women, and plenty of middle-aged women, mm. because I, and, and, I work a lot with, with women who are going through menopause. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a yeah. certain age, age range. Um, <clears throat> older people. Uh, I don't treat children because I think right. that there's a consent issue there. Yeah. And I do not think that, for me personally, it not, would not feel right to be needling right. children. But other people can do that very sure. well. Um And um, I, I, a lot of women now come to me with fertility issues. Um, but it's not that I... Um, a, I'm a woman and they tend to feel safe with me. Sure. And so people tend to... I'm happy to work with all the hormonal stuff that you know, yeah. women have. Um, and, uh, and I'll really... I always talk to people at quite some length on the phone before I book them in. Right. Because I really want to know that we're a match and that they like the idea of how I work. Right. Okay. And so is there a typical outcome that comes after, at the end of the treatment? Is it people are happy and they, they just stop coming? You mentioned it before, like after the four or five sessions. But... 
Uh, no, there's no typical outcome. Everybody is an individual. Yeah. Certainly with those initial sessions, if somebody's showing no sign of any improvement, I am going to be saying to them, I think it would be a good idea for you to maybe. try something else. Yes. And maybe I can recommend X, Y, or Z. Um, sometimes people seem to be not getting better, but they still want to come. Yeah. And I always check out there's not some kind of, you know, attachment issue, like they, they want to come because they feel that they need to spend time with me, yeah. but it's not necessarily a therapeutic help. Sometimes there's stuff going on that they, I if I really make sure that they know that they can stop, then they'll, you know, and they want to continue. I know that maybe yeah. they'll, soon down the line, they may tell me that there's something else yes. going on. Okay. Um, but there is no... There is no outcome. Within a treatment itself, one of the most common outcomes, Mm. if somebody arrives stressed and agitated, is that they leave karma. In fact, I have stressed, agitated people running into the treatment room and throwing themselves on the couch saying, please, and then... (laughs) And uh, they leave. So, yes, that's common. Great. Okay. Now we could do the same set of questions for zero balance. Can you, this is something I'm also interested to know more about it because obviously you explained to me when you started working here, but give us a a bit of a a definition and explanation more about zero balance. Okay, Uh, so that has to come in two parts. There's the kind of, uh, this is what it apparently is and there's, why I am completely passionate about it, and, okay. and, and say so. It's a hands-on therapy. All right. Uh, it has the enormous advantage for some people of being done with a person fully clothed. Yeah. Except they take their shoes off mm-hmm. and a belt if they've got a belt. But yeah. otherwise, so that makes it very safe to receive. Sure. And not everybody likes the massage oils, towel stuff, undressing. So yeah, to be able to be have work done on the on your body sure. but feel safe and uh, clear in that way is yes. a massive bonus yes. uh, for lots of people um, it looks subtle uh, it involves pressure and stretches and it, the focus is on the skeleton mm-hmm. but it isn't a, a manipulating crunching thing no. so the, the bottom line is that it is a, a, a non-diagnostic which is kind of challenging especially in a world where people want to go what's wrong with me yes. what can you what can you do about it it is a non-diagnostic way of paying attention to the whole of a person mm-hmm. as they are in their body okay. and that is not just a physical thing okay so where we hold tension i can feel mm-hmm. and what we do is in effect with our hands or with what i do with my hands is similar to what would happen if if we were having a chat mm-hmm. and then suddenly you said to me rosanna i need to tell you that i'm going through this really difficult time in my life yes. i wouldn't just go Oh yeah, and it's quite hot in here, isn't it? And nor I would, I would at least stop mm-hmm. and go. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want to tell me about it? What zero balancing does is with your hands, you're feeling, and you go. Oh, but you don't go as if I said to you. Let's take that analogy a bit further. If you said, I'm going through a really difficult time in my life, I wouldn't, and it wouldn't go down very well if I did, go, oh, well, what you need is Is to do this. this this You'd go, oh, excuse me, do you know anything about me? So to find a respectful way to go, oh, Mm. I feel this, not, oh yeah, I know what it is, and it needs to be different, but just go, oh. Acknowledging. Acknowledging. And paying attention, the all I can say, Massimo, is that the the power of having that kind of attention paid to one with no expectation of change, mm-hmm. of not, oh, right, I'm wrong and this should be different, but just, oh, effectively, that person heard me mm. with, with your hands. And all of this is on an unconscious level for the yeah, receiver. Sure. It's immense. So yeah. I have had over the years people who have had, they come for all, all reasons, musculoskeletal problems that are stubborn, 
emotional stress, life challenges, all sorts. Yeah. But let's say somebody's got a, 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 an old injury that's yes. not getting better and they've tried, they've had physio and they've had steroid injections and they've had osteopathy and they've had you know and all sorts of things. And maybe it's not getting better. And then I do some zero balancing where I just stay with that. I'm not healing. Yeah. It's not a healing. There's no exchange of energy. No, no. I stay and with my hands I go, oh. So in this process, when you notice, you mentioned you notice things, do you actually feed back to the client? I, he- I feel this. I feel no. that. Or you just, you keep it for yourself. You're just sensing. I'm more fishing. likely... Because what will often happen is it, when we're moving with, you know, we're, I'm feeling what I feel, yeah. and there's a protocol yeah. that everybody has, Yes. but each one is individual because I stop and stay yeah. where that person shows it. Um, often, just even the sort of evaluating, the, the initial, you go back and something's already changed. If yes. I get a person to move, you know, I move their neck, Yes. I don't need to say, oh, do you notice how much freer your neck is? They will know. Wow. At the end of the session, they will go, oh my God, it yeah. felt like it was so. oiled. So they might ask at the end, what did you find? And I have to say, I'm not being diagnostic. No. I just paid attention to where I felt. Yeah. What did you feel? Well, I felt this. this. That's more powerful than Great. me being the expert who can tell them about themselves. Fascinating. I really love it. I love it with a passion. So. Does, does this treatment have a particular client again? A particular mm, demographic? No, no. It could be anybody. Mm. Uh, you don't have to. In fact, we actually a caution against uh, treating people who are actively sick. Mm. Um, it's more for the the sort of reasonably well person who wants an enhancement of right. ease in their life. Yeah. Um, but my typical zero balancing client will be an acupuncture patient who I have told about zero balancing. Okay. Because occasionally I get somebody come. Yeah. But it's 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 quite a well held secret mm. in 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 the world of there are not yeah. thousands of us in the world, yeah. and I teach it too. And it's one of those things which is, it's because it's hard to it's not a, an easy sell. And again, you know, it's one of those therapies that is not that people people will call and ask for a massage or ask for something that is well well known. But yes. you know, it's unlikely somebody wakes up in the morning and say, "Oh, I'm going to have a zero balance today," no. because they don't know what it is. No. So they don't think about it as a remedy or as a solution to a problem. No, they might they not don't. even have. But yeah. once people start having it, they will very often be most upset if I want to do acupuncture. Right, okay. That's and great. sometimes I'll say, you know, it really is an acupuncture day. Oh, all right then. Okay. I'll do some zero balancing too. Oh, okay then, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what is the typical outcome of a zero balance session? If there is a typical? Um, there is a signature mm-hmm. outcome which will be relaxed but energised. Great. So a clarity in your body, being feeling more more fluid mm. uh, um, and quieter mind and uh, I, I think one signature which even if people are not specifically looking for it is I have, over the years I've been doing it which is nearly the 30 years I've realised is very common which is that they find themselves the people who've had zero balancing if they have it reasonably regularly um, they will find themselves navigating more smoothly mm. through the turbulence of life because life is turbulent yeah. for all of us to some degree and it can be dramatically turbulent at certain times. And there is something about having zero balancing which allows a person to find their way through that, not in a numbed Prozac kind of way no. where they they are real and they know what's going on, but somehow they have... They're, they're better able to do it. Yeah. And I always think, you know, if every world leader could have a zero balancing session once a day, once twice a day, twice a day, every hour, we wouldn't be in the mess that we're yeah, in. I can imagine, yes. All right. How long is a treatment? I guess your treatments are all an hour, but yes. I'm saying, is it best to have more than one session? The, uh, the, the frequency isn't as sort of specific as with acupuncture. Mm. 
Um, but if somebody's coming either because they have got something musculoskeletal that's yeah. quite specific or they're going through a quite specific lot of turbulence, for instance, yeah. then coming once a week for a bit would be good. But it's not crucial. Mm. And I have people who maybe come for one and then they book in six weeks later, two months le- later, yeah. a year later. It, 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 it very, it's a movable feast. Fantastic. And, it's a, and yes, it, the session would still be an hour. Right. This is really interesting. And I guess a lot of people out there might benefit from hearing this because some, sometimes people want to ask us questions and having you telling us exactly what it is is great. Can I have um, a few general questions for yourself or for your business? So what is your relationship with patients in terms of like how to run a practice for 30 years how important is patient if you're approaching private practice and you want to start a business? I certainly like think when you're beginning, yes. you have to understand that there is no magic sort of fix. That um, I mean, I was lucky when I started an acupuncture because there, 30 years ago there were not as many acupuncturists. Yes. And I, after once I was able to be working full time, mm. which was after a while, um, I got so busy so quickly yeah. that I actually pulled back and said I, I only want four days a week yes. but it's much harder these days mm. I think you have to be uh, so I moved from Northamptonshire to, yes. to Cambridgeshire yes. three years ago and when we first met yes. I said to you I don't expect the clinic to find me my patients mm-hmm. I know it will take time um, but I'm going to book this chunk of time because yeah. I want to set it up that I am available yes. and it was slow to start with I kept on saying to my husband, when I stop in Northamptonshire, I will get busy in Cambridge. Yeah. And he was more like, oh, you've got to be careful. You know, you need to have your income. When I when I stopped, yes. which was only six, nine months ago. No. Yeah. And I always knew that to some, I think you do sometimes have to create a vacuum yeah. in order for new things to, to sure. come in. But obviously... Again, if you've got a, a private income and it doesn't matter, you can do that. If you need to make sure that yeah. you, that's when my part-time jobs came in. You know? Yes, and I think also the, the, the point is, if you know that you have a plan B, you never put 100% attention Correct. to plan A. Correct. And that's uh, how a lot of people are in a kind of a intermediate situation for a very long time yeah. because they never make... Yeah, but I do think in terms of that patience... I think that possibly the worst combination would be patience while sitting waiting for the universe to provide. I think you yes. need to be patient and getting the word out in Practice, a way that's real for you. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no point doing something that doesn't feel genuine for you. No, no, absolutely. Uh, and then having people come that you think, ah, oh, this is not really what I want. Great. Okay. What is your relationship with the consistency when running a business and running a private practice? Um, well, my reading of consistency for me would be really knowing what I'm about and mm. what I want to offer. Yeah. That's what I would be consistent with. Yes. So I have certain things like I, I, um, I think that it's important that I look after myself, that I value myself, that mm-hmm. I don't give away freebies. Mm-hmm. I think that new practitioners will often do things like um, uh, half price offers. Yeah, I've never done that. Mm-hmm. I think that if I undercut myself and say, yeah. look, I just desperately want to treat you uh, or, or not charge you know, friends, that kind of thing. That's never worked for me personally. Mm. And if it works for people, that's fine. Absolutely. But I have always believed in saying, this is what I'm worth. Yes. This is what I charge. And obviously, if somebody says, people might say to me, can I stretch my treatments out? And I will say, is this a money issue? And if they say yes, I'll say, look, I don't want to see you in two months because you'll be wasting your money. Yeah. How much can you afford? Yeah. So I, I, I would never turn people away. Yeah. But I'm also fairly canny. Having had people tell me they couldn't afford full whack and then take, I did have one lady many, 30, 25 years ago, okay. who then took five grandchildren to Florida on holiday. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you, you've got to be, you, but I think that the consistency comes with valuing yourself. Um, yeah. 
because that way people will have confidence in you. Yeah. And if you're always saying, oh, well, I'm, I don't really know that I, I'm worth this, people are not going to think you're worth it. Great. What is your relationship with adaptability and quick changing of direction when you're running a business? Oh, well, I don't think that really applies to me particularly. Okay. I changed direction as in I relocated, mm. but that was to do with my life changing yes. completely. And I came back to Cambridge, which is where I did my degree, and I love Cambridge, and my daughter had been here, and so I was happy as anything to be back. Yes. Um, but I didn't just drop what I had before. I, I needed a staged yeah. uh, a staged change. Um, and of course, I mean, I've had to change. Sometimes the clinic's closed down, and I've had to find another place yes. to work and things, but... Uh, uh, Apart from that, you know, for 30 years, I've been pretty consistent about this is what I do yeah. and how can I make it possible that I do it. Great. Okay, a couple more questions and we're finishing. So where do you see yourself in three years' time as far as your practice is concerned? Just, I, I work three long days a week. Yeah. That's what I want to do. I'd rather be busy in a chunk and have yeah. more time for the rest of my yeah. life. Um, do a week's work in three days. That's you know, having that be busy. Yeah, I don't, I don't envisage any significant change. Great. Last question, which is about uh, you helping somebody else who wants to start a business in private practice. If you could give someone starting some advice, somebody is in your position, comes to you, gets some needles, or oh, zero balance. They say, God, this is fantastic. Changed my life. What would you suggest to this person? I suppose, again, it comes back to being true to yourself. Sure. So uh, there are no easy fixes. Really think, is this something that if you somebody said you can't do it, you would feel bereft, mm -hmm. frustrated, yeah. whatever, then follow that instinct. Then put all your, all your curiosity and, and passion and energy into that. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds like it would be a good way to make money... I don't think we're in the business of helping people, yeah. working with people, alongside people. If it can earn you your living, great. Um, but if that's the number one thing, that will bring the money in. I don't think it will. Right. So getting that balance between what you want and what you need practically, but also what it means to you emotionally intellectually, life purpose, yes. then that, that would be it. Great. Well, that has been a pleasure hearing uh, from you. I mean, hearing, uh, having this time to hear what uh, about your history, about your, your therapies. So thank you very much and all the best for your future practice. Thank you.